So let's talk about hormone balance in women. So in women, there are two main hormones that need to be in balance, and they are estrogen and progesterone. So estrogen makes you female. It gives you soft skin, female characteristics like breast tissue and hips. It's also very important for your brain and for your bones. And then progesterone is the calming hormone, so it helps prevent anxiety and helps you sleep at night. So in fact, did you know that pregnancy is a high progesterone state, which is why a lot of women feel really calm when they're pregnant. So it's all about having these hormones balanced. If your estrogen is too high or too low, or your progesterone's too high or too low, you're gonna have symptoms. So women who have excess estrogen, they'll have bloating and weight gain. They'll have breast tenderness, cyclic headaches, moodiness, heavy periods, it can even lead to fibroids and endometriosis, which I'll talk about today. Now, women who are going through menopause, they experience a drop in their estrogen. They can get hot flashes, vaginal dryness, dry skin, and memory issues. Similarly, if your progesterone's too high, you can get symptoms of being groggy, bloated, or nauseous. And then if your progesterone's too low, you can have menstrual irregularities, anxiety, trouble sleeping, and weight gain. So let's go over the menstrual cycle briefly. So estrogen peaks in the first half of the month and progesterone peaks in the second half of the month. And ovulation takes place right in the middle of the month, around day 14. So ovulation is when one of the ovaries releases an egg. So progest progesterone will naturally go down in the last week of the month. And because progesterone is the calming hormone, when it goes down, that can lead to a lot of symptoms, such as PMS, anxiety, breast tenderness, or migraines. There's also a rise in the insulin levels at the end of the month, which leads to sugar cravings, which is why a lot of women crave sweets right before their periods. Now, you only make this progesterone in the second half of the month if you ovulate. So women who are not ovulating regular, regularly or who are not having periods regularly, for example, women going through perimenopause, which is the years leading up to menopause, these women will not be ovulating, so they won't be making progesterone. And remember, progesterone is that calming hormone, so that's why these women will have a lot of symptoms, such as anxiety, mood swings, PMS, breast tenderness, and insomnia. So what I like to do in my practice is to check hormone levels on day 21 of the cycle because that is when progesterone typically peaks if a woman ovulates. So based on that peak progesterone level, we can tell if ovulation has take, taken place or not. So we call this the mid-luteal phase hormones. So let's go over a case example. So Emily is a 45-year-old woman who's suffering from heavy periods with cramps. She has breast tenderness and dense breasts. She suffers from constipation, and she's about 15 pounds overweight. So I check Emily's day 21 hormones, and her estradiol, which is her estrogen, is 350, which is very high, because normal estradiol for this time of the month is 150. And then her progesterone is three, which is low, because if, someone, if the woman ovulates, we expect the progesterone to be 12 or higher. So I send Emily for a pelvic ultrasound and it shows large fibroids. So fibroids are benign tumors in the uterus. So what's Emily's diagnosis? So Emily has estrogen dominance. So as you can see, her estrogen is much higher than her progesterone. And the estrogen is causing these fibroids to grow, which is then causing her heavy periods. Estrogen is also causing her breast tenderness and contributing to her weight issues. So estrogen dominance can cause a lot of symptoms. It's basically when estrogen is not balanced with the progesterone and the excess estrogens are not being cleared or detoxified properly. So it can lead to a lot of issues. So in the breast, it can cause dense breasts, breast cysts, and unfortunately even breast cancer. It can cause fibroids, which again are the benign growths in the uterus, which can then lead to heavy periods. Sometimes if fibroids get really big, it can cause pain and pressure in the pelvic area. 
It can lead to endometriosis, which is where the inner lining of the uterus spreads to other parts of the pelvis where it's not supposed to be and cause extreme pain during periods. It can cause ovarian cysts, thyroid nodules, and headaches. Women with estrogen dominance often struggle with their weight because the excess estrogen makes them hold on to weight. They also can have mood swings and heavy periods. So what's interesting is that women with estrogen dominance typically have many of these symptoms together. And I can suspect it clinically just from their history and from physical exam. And then I do the blood work to confirm it. So what's interesting is that your body habitus can often reflect your hormones. Women with estrogen dominance can have a pear-shaped or hourglass-shaped uh, body habitus. You know, they'll have larger breasts and larger hips from the higher estrogen levels. And this is in contrast to insulin resistance, which I'll be talking about later today. But insulin resistance is what causes prediabetes and diabetes. So in this case, we see more of an apple body shape. A lot of the fat is in the abdomen as visceral fat, and it's surrounding the organs. And that is the type of fat that causes the problem with blood sugar regulation. So how do we treat estrogen dominance? So getting back to our case example, the first thing I do is I give Emily magnesium citrate to help move her bowels. So, you know, your bowel habits are one of the ways you eliminate and get rid of hormones and toxins in your body. So women who are constipated, they're not going to be able to clear their estrogens properly. So bowel movements are one way that we're able to get, reduce the estrogen levels in the body. Secondly, I clean up her diet. So I advise her to eat more vegetables, to cut out all the sugar, processed food, and vegetable oils. And in particular, I advise her to eat more cruciferous vegetables, which are like broccoli, cauliflower, and cabbage, because these vegetables really help improve the healthy metabolism of estrogens. I often do testing on the gut microbiome. Um, and one of the things I find is that women with estrogen dominance often have high beta-glucuronidase in the gut. And this is something that's causing recycling of toxins and estrogens from their gut. So the gut microbiome is your bacterial ecosystem of trillions of bacteria in your gut. The good news is if we find this, this is something we can treat. Then I advise these women to avoid chemical estro estrogens from the environment, known as xenoestrogens. So xenoestrogens are found in plastics, fragrances, and personal care products. It's also found in hormones in food, such as non-organic poultry and dairy products. And finally, I balance the estrogen with bioidentical progesterone. So my preference is to use bioidentical progesterone because it has the identical chemical structure as hormones in the human body. And it's often made in a compounding pharmacy from yams. It can come as capsule or as a cream in a very easy to use pump. So for women who have constipation, my preference is to prescribe it topically as a cream so that it doesn't affect their gut further. And what I have them do is apply it at bedtime on their groin um, in the second half of the menstrual cycle. So from day 13 through 27 of the menstrual cycle. So we're just replicating what's naturally supposed to happen in the body. The nice thing with the bioidentical hormones is it just adds to what your body is already making. It does not suppress the natural hormone cycle. So it's very different from birth control pills, which are synthetic hormones that suppress ovulation and suppress your natural hormone cycle. So how do you clear or metabolize estrogens in your body? So this diagram shows that we break down our estrogens to either protective metabolites or bad metabolites. So the protective metabolites are 2-hydroxyestradiol and 2-hydroxyestrone, and they are considered protective on breast tissue. But if you have high levels of the bad metabolite, which is the 16-hydroxyestrone, then you are at higher risk of developing fibroids, breast cysts, and even breast cancer. A lot of these conversions happen in the liver. So this is why having a healthy liver is so important for healthy hormone balance. For some women, we actually do test for these metabolites through the urine. 
And this can be very uh, useful information, especially for women who have a strong family history of breast cancer or for women who are breast cancer survivors. So on the diagram, you can see there's a tiny pink star that has two special compounds known as I3C and DIM. And these really help to promote the healthy metabolism of estrogens towards the protective metabolites. So where can you get those compounds? So they're found in cruciferous vegetables. So I3C stands for indole-3-carbonyl, and DIM is diindolylmethane. So cruciferous vegetables are like broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, kale, bok choy, and cabbage. So I always encourage my patients who have estrogen dominance to eat more cruciferous vegetables. Cruciferous veggies are actually also anti-cancer for many reasons. They're actually rich in sulforaphane, which helps to replenish your glutathione stores, which is your master antioxidant in your liver. They also feed the good bacteria in your gut microbiome. And the gut microbiome strongly influences your hormonal health. Lastly, I also sometimes give my patients I3C DIM in supplement form, since taking one pill can be equivalent to eating 20 pounds of broccoli and really boost the healthy estrogen metabolites. So getting back to our case example, so after three months, Emily comes back to see me and now she's having daily bowel movements with the magnesium citrate, so she's no longer constipated. She's been able to lose 15 pounds with the clean diet. Her breast tenderness has resolved, meaning that she's clearing her estrogens better. And her periods are less heavy and painful with the bioidentical progesterone cream. And she feels healthier and more balanced. So let's move on to another case example. So Gina is a 28-year-old woman with irregular periods her whole life. Sometimes she goes months without a period. She's 25 pounds overweight, and she struggles with acne and facial hair. So I checked Gina's day 21 hormones, and her estradiol is 170. That's not too bad, given that normal's around 150. But her progesterone's really low at two. Again, 12 or higher would indicate ovulation. So she's, she did not ovulate this cycle. And then her testosterone is high at 78 because normal is under 45 in women. Her fasting insulin is 18, which is high because ideal fasting insulin is six. Now insulin is the hormone your pancreas makes telling your, your body to take up blood sugar. So if your body's receptors are ignoring insulin, then your pancreas has to make even more insulin. So we call this insulin resistance. I send Gina for a pelvic ultrasound and it shows numerous ovarian cysts. So what's the diagnosis? So Gina has polycystic ovarian syndrome or PCOS. So PCOS is a fairly common condition. In fact, one in 10 women suffer from this condition. It is a clinical syndrome, so some women have mild PCOS sim symptoms, while others have more severe symptoms. There's three main things that characterize PCOS. So the first is irregular cycles, because ovulation is not taking place every month. So we call this anovulatory cycles. The second is insulin resistance. Again, this is when your pancreas is having to make a lot more insulin because your body's receptors are tuning it out. The problem is insulin, when it's high, it can trigger more weight gain. Insulin is also inflammatory on the body. So these women typically struggle with their weight and they may actually even develop prediabetes or diabetes. Lastly, these women have hyperandrogenism, which means they have high testosterone. So they may suffer from acne or facial hair. I've even had women tell me they, they have to shave their entire face because of all the excess hair. So getting back to our case example, so how do we treat PCOS? So the first thing I do for Gina is I give her bioidentical progesterone to regulate her cycle so she does get a period every month. You know, a lot of time, women with PCOS are offered birth control pills to regulate their cycles. 
But if a woman does not need this for contraception, my preference is to use bioidentical progesterone. And I just give it to the women in the second half of the month, so from day 13 through 27. And again, it can be oral as a capsule or as a cream, mimicking the natural menstrual cycle. So what happens is when progesterone goes up, it builds up the uterine lining. And then when it goes down, it triggers a period. So the nice thing with the bioidentical hormones, again, is it just adds to what the women, women's hormones are already doing. It does not suppress the natural hormone cycle. And it has less side effects. So for example, uh, birth control pills can often lead to weight gain. And that's not always favorable, especially for women who are already struggling with insulin resistance. So the next thing I do is I put her on a clean paleo diet. So this is a diet lower in grains. So this is gonna help her lose weight and help with the insulin resistance. Then I help to optimize her vitamin D level because vitamin D is so important for hormones. And I give her omega-3 fatty acids, which are anti-inflammatory. So that's like fish oil or algae oil. I always address the gut microbiome because if a patient is bloated or constipated, the first thing we have to do is get their gut healthy. So I'll often use probiotics or magnesium to help regulate their bowel movements. Definitely I'll encourage daily exercise um, because that's gonna help with the weight loss and help with the insulin resistance. I often also use berberine because berberine is research proven to help with insulin resistance. It activates the body's tissues to become more responsive to insulin. It's also very well tolerated and anti-inflammatory. And then sometimes I use myo-inositol, which is also research proven to help with ovulation and fertility for women with PCOS. It also helps their metabolic profile as well as their high testosterone issues. Okay, so after three months, Gina comes back to see me and now she's having regular periods with the bioidentical progesterone. She's lost 15 pounds and she's feeling healthier. Her skin is clearing up and her labs show significant improvement in her fasting insulin, which is now down to eight. And then a year later, I have her repeat her pelvic ultrasound, and it shows significant reduction in the number of ovarian cysts. I've actually had several women where we repeat the pelvic ultrasound and all of their ovarian cysts are gone, which is absolutely amazing. So it really shows the power of food, diet, and lifestyle on hormones. <music>